All right. Uh, well, my name is Tim Samaras. I'm a storm chaser. I uh, chase tornadoes. I love to deploy instruments and pass the tornadoes. Been doing it for 10 years. Um, had some success. Yep, had some success. I, I'm generally, we, our group generally gets probes in tornadoes at least one time every year. We've been doing so since 2002. So I have had success almost every year. You've had Not some almost, amazing, every year. amazing uh, finds on the pressure, haven't you? Yes, one pressure measurement we did on uh, June 24, 2003, we measured a 100 millibar pressure drop as a, a particularly strong, it was actually rated F4, this is before the EF change, it was rated F4, maximum wind speeds we calculated using cyclostrophic balance and all that, up to close to 260 miles per hour. The tornado went over the top of the probe, uh, the probe remained intact, we actually designed the probe stay on the ground. We actually tested it in a wind tunnel. In fact, a good proof of that was when the tornado swept over the top of the probe, uh, it basically vacuumed up all the gravel around the probe and left the probe intact. In fact, as the wind speed flows over the top of the probe, there's actually a vertical pressure that pushes the probe into the dirt. And we've actually verified that in the wind tunnel using what they call a load cell underneath the probe. And we found out when the guy cranked up the wind tunnel speed up to over 100, 150 miles per hour, we actually saw the vertical pressure being exerted out of the road cell. When we saw that, we thought, hey, our calculations were valid. We went and tested it, and sure enough, the Manchester case was a very dramatic example of how well it worked. You got some pretty good video off some of those on your, your media probe. Yeah, um, it was kind of funny because that year, the Manchester tornado, Carson Peter, which is the National Geographic photographer, uh, deployed what they called the Tin Man. And although I had discussed at length with the engineers at the Society to not shape that probe the way they did, it looked like a, some sort of a flying wing thing. It was horrible. I'll tell you what, I told them that probe's going to get airborne. Sure enough, Karsten drug that thing out, <laughs> set it on the pavement. It's gone. Went back. <laughs> no Karsten Peter probe, no Tin Man, no nothing. We had to come back the next day. We found it. 300 yards away in a field. It actually careened on the pavement. You can see where this probe bounced on the pavement, left gouges in the pavement, and then into the apron and it went rattled off in the field. We found it. But then the society comes back and says, well, Tim, can you build us a probe that would survive a tornado, that we can collect imagery? I said, sure, we'd be happy to. So that's how the, the, the video probe, media probe, photogrammetric probe, it has all kinds of names. That's how it came about. Seven cameras in it. 30 inches in diameter, weighs almost 100 pounds. And then we were successful getting that deployed in uh, June of the following year, 2004, near Storm Lake, Iowa, when an F EF3 tornado passed right over the top of it, and we were able to capture probably the first ever video inside of a tornado. What did it look like? A bunch of high-speed rocks and garbage and <laughs> stuff of, flying across. A lot across. of dirt and wind. <laughs> a lot of dirt and wind, that's right. These cameras are unique on the inside. These are security bullet-type cameras. They, when there's a lot, enough illumination, they've got a shutter speed of 1 over 100,000, which means that as this debris goes flying by, there was enough light, at least at that time, to stop things in near perfect slow motion, in, in perfect stills. You can grab a still off of that, print it, and some of, we had some vegetation fly by. It was so crisp and clear that you could actually see the veins in the vegetation. That's amazing. It's pretty cool stuff. Yep. Uh, quickly, you've done some stuff with uh, high-speed lightning photography. High-speed awesome lightning photography, yes. Uh, in 2006, uh, my background is with using high-speed photography. I've used high-speed photography for almost 30 years. And one of the things I wanted to do is take some of those high-speed cameras and point to the sky during the lightning. I had that chance in 2006. The Society sponsored a, uh, a field mission to go out and collect just that. So I used a digital camera called a Phantom camera, specifically a Phantom V71. And we pointed to the sky, had a small photo detector, it, it tripped on a lightning strike, and lo and behold, for the first time ever, we were actually able to see the step leader process. The step leader process is the, the electrical charge and intensification between the, uh, the, pair, the, the top of the thunderstorm, or the bottom of the thunderstorm and the ground. It's that feeder thing that comes down. That process is nearly impossible to capture in a standard video camera, but if you have a video camera running at 10,000 frames per second or 15,000 frames per second, then you can see this magnificent 
step leader process come down. It's never been seen before with high speed photography because before they used film. Film is impossible using uh, high speed photography because a 200 foot roll of 16 millimeter film running at 10,000 frames per second lasts two seconds mm -hmm. in the camera. Not very two long. Seconds. So the trick is, okay dude, when are you going to start the camera? Which two seconds do you pick in the store? Which two seconds you pick? And so it's never, so needless to say, it's never been captured. With the advent of digital high speed, it's sitting there, the electronic memory is rotating, and the trigger tells it to stop. And so when it tells it to stop, you can capture some of the stuff before the trigger, some of the stuff after the trigger. And that's how we're able to see nice. the step leader. I, I saw that, it's incredible. It's good it's, stuff. It's I saw it before you released it, you know, we put it on your website. Oh yeah. It was unbelievable. Yeah, it was good stuff, uh -huh. and we're hoping to get out again. We've got another camera that um, runs uh, about a million and a half frames per second. That's a little more trickier. That camera, we recently converted over to digital um, three years ago, and the objective there is to catch the attachment process when the step leader touches the ground. I want to see that formation process. I want to see the formation of the return stroke coming up off the ground. Nice. But David, we need to have you stand out there so I know where I to aim I should go camera. with you so you can That's get That's right. <laughs> we need to have you stand out there so I know where to aim the uh, camera. It, it happens a little too often for me. A little me. too often. <laughs> well, you're, you know, you're, you're the one that uh, had all the close calls. So I don't know. We figured you'd be the perfect guy to have with us. I, you might regret that one day. <laughs> <laughs> So, now, if anybody wants to find you online, how do they find you? Our, our main tornado research is twistx.org, T-W-I-S-T-E-X.org. I've got a personal website that's turned into a cob website, thunderchase.com. That's where my DVDs and all that stuff that you can find and go buy. My DVDs get kind of dated. I just haven't had time to update it. Right. It's called Driven by Passion. Uh, I developed it in 2005. So, anything I develop that I've caught beyond 2005, I'll... It's just can't get it. <laughs> just get too busy, don't you? I, my yeah. my my lifestyle and the things I do and the, and the stuff I get involved with, I'm going 100 mile an hour. Any any TV stuff coming up? This TV year? stuff, yes. Uh, I participated the first year of uh, Discovery Storm Chasers. They seemed to like my participation because they asked me back for another season, Excellent. season four. Excellent. Okay. Are you on any of the social networking sites? Facebook. Twitter. Oh yeah, that was another thing. Facebook. <laughs> that's that's wild stuff. You know, I mean, I originally got on Facebook just to keep track of my kids, so I put on there, you know, Tim Samaras. And next thing you know, I'm getting all these friend requests. They want to be my friend. Well, I'm not sure I want to be their friend, but I clicked, and so you know, next thing you know, I've got. I don't know, 1,200 friends. You might get you a fan page. Those top out at 5,000 on the regular page. Well, I don't have to worry about <laughs> fan page, you know. But it's it's kind of interesting. I, I go in there and I put some, you know, I put some comments in there about talking about the upcoming season. And then I get 50 responses. You know, everybody's you're doing kind of, interesting things. People yeah, are well, interested. I mean, people are, you know, they 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 find their their interest in storms and storm chasing. Reference the the conference here. We set a right. record on attendance this year. Lots of interest in storm chasing, and that's largely driven by the media. It is. All right. Anything else you want to add? Um, hi, Mom. <laughs> <laughs>